You know, I had a debate on this one quite a bit, whether to even finish this video or not, because I started on it thinking maybe availability might get a little bit better, but it really hasn't. But we're going to go ahead and roll for it anyway. We are going to be focusing on these two cards, the 6800 XT and the 3080, and we're looking at it from a different perspective. So in the past, we've seen everybody go, oh, if you go 1440p, 6800 XT is where you want to be. If you go 4K, 3080, despite the memory capacity difference, the 3080 tended to outperform almost all the time of the 6800 XT at 4K, except in some specific titles. Now, what happens if you say, I don't care about 1440p gaming, I don't care about 4K gaming? And no, we're not going to 1080p. Titles already told you that. What if ultra wide gaming is your thing? See, I've got this panel behind me and I absolutely love gaming on ultra wide. And the market is getting bigger and bigger for people playing in that resolution. So what we did was we took these two cards, threw them on our test bench over there with the 5900X and 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 and a one terabyte, uh, what's that? PCIe Gen 4 drive, that Cardia PC440, 440C, you know, PCIe Gen 4, super fast loading times. But what we wanted to do is if you didn't rely on, well, if you didn't lean on ray tracing, you didn't lean on DLSS, and you didn't lean on smart access memory, just raw card performance, none of the extra stuff. So I don't know. You guys may not agree with that. Somebody may not agree with that. Somebody say, hey, Keith, if it's got smart access memory, you should turn it on. Okay, cool. I mean, we do that for all the other testing, but uh, what about the games that support DLSS? We're not doing ray tracing support here. What if we just turned on DLSS and gave the NVIDIA cards a super huge advantage? Nah, we're just gonna look at the, the cards as they are without all of their extra goodies. Now, if you want us to revisit this video where we do enable smart access memory, and then we do enable DLSS on the games that support it, and this, I mean, we can do that. Just let us know down in the comment section below. Then, you know, we're, we're definitely open to doing more than just this one video. This doesn't have to be the end of it. This is not an all-inclusive, but we did take a look at 13 games. Let's take a look at those games, starting things off with none other than Forza Horizon 4. And right off the bat, we see a lead for the 6800 XT, leading by about four FPS on the averages and the 1% percentiles. Now, if we move things into Shadow of the Tomb Raider, DX12 on the highest settings, we see a flip. It's almost the, I mean, this this is close enough to where this is really margin of error performance here between the two. What about Rainbow Six Siege? Everybody loves stupid high frame rates, and actually a lot of people do love Rainbow Six Siege. But you see, uh, well, this one's interesting. You get a higher frame rate on the 3080, but you get a higher 1% percentile on the 6800 DXT. Although, I don't know that you're going to be hard pressed to find the difference between 282 and 306 FPS. Doom Eternal? Chalks up another win for the RTX 3080, going from 287 up to 302. Breaking that 300 FPS barrier. I mean, you know, most panels are 144 hertz at the best at ultra wide, but it is what it is. Uh, Watchdog Legions, very high settings. DX12, no ray tracing or anything, leads, uh, well, neck and neck. See there, pretty much margin of error across the board on those two. What about Cold War? Black Ops, Call of Duty, Cold War. Well, there you go. Looks like 98 FPS to a 92 FPS. It's a sizable lead there for the 3080. Although you think you're gonna have a hard time telling the difference. Horizon Zero Dawn yields us pretty much the same results as we saw in Cold War with the 3080 out ahead. Moving into Borderlands 3 DX12, we see the 6800 XT take a lead here. 109 to 104 FPS. Both of them are generating quite good frame rates there. Uh, the 1% percentile is a little bit higher on the 6800 XT, so that's a win. What about Total War Troy Saga? If that's your kind of thing and you're into those real-time strategies, then you're going to get the better performance out of the RTX 3080. Okay, well then, there's that one. What about Dirt 5? If you're like me and you absolutely love Dirt 5, looks like you're going to get your better performance out of the RX 6800 XT by a good little margin there. So 76 on the 1% percentiles, 86, you know, it's five, six FPS faster across the board. But if controls your jam, well, the 3080 is gonna be leagues faster than the 6800 XT in this game. This is a very interesting game. It's one of my favorites of the past few years, but it shows very favorable performance on the 3080. However, the 6800 XT is going to give you very good performance. You're not going to be left out in the dust, you know, in the cold there, if, if that's your thing. Metro Exodus, we see pretty much margin of error within two FPS difference at that. Uh, frame rate is less than a 2% difference, but it is leaning toward the 6800 XT. And last but not least is Battlefield 5, in case you like to play multiplayer games and get, um, well, enjoy getting cheated on you'll get it at a much higher frame rate on the 6800 XT on the average, but the 3080 presents a better 1% percentiles. It does have, you know, it is what it is. So, in all of these tests, we see, well, there's 13 games, 
there are six wins for the 6800 XT, seven wins for the 3080. If you take out the control, which is the biggest win for the Nvidia cards, you yield a six and six split with pretty much the same frame rates or not same frame rates, but the same percentages in either way on the games that it loses. So anywhere from a 7% swing in either direction. So at 3440 by 1440, whereas at 4K, it's a lot easier to make a recommendation of one, 1440p, it's a lot easier to make a recommendation against the other. If you're at 3440 by 1440 and you don't care about ray tracing or DLSS, I personally would tell you, implore you to care about something like DLSS, but Fidelity FX Super Resolution is coming one day in the future, but we don't know when, so I can't. It's a it's a non unknown quantity, so I can't really factor it in there. But if you like smart access memory and you got a Ryzen 5000 series chipset, mm, man, this is getting really hard. Honestly, right now, just whatever you can get off the shelves. Good luck. I don't know. Let us know down in the comment section below. And wait, there's no there's no article. Sorry guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Like, subscribe. You know what to do. All that stuff all around the screen. I'm out. Bye.